Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the dedication of Ruben W. Hope Jr. Elementary School. I am Gilberto Lozano, and at this time, uh, it is an honor to serve as the first principal of Hope Elementary. At this time, the Kenny Creek High School Navy Ju Junior ROTC will present the colors. Once the colors are presented, Addison and Ashlyn Wilson will lead us in the pledge to the U.S. Uh, flag and the Texas flag. Following the pledge, Kinsley Harding will lead us in the Hope Pledge. Please stand for the presentation of the colors and the pledge. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Please join us for the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. At Hope Elementary, I will learn all I can. I will try my best and be all I am. In reading, math, and all the rest, I will try my hardest and do my best. Husky proud and husky strong every day, all day long. We are kind. We are responsible. We are respectful. We are Hope Huskies. Thank you, Addison, Ashley, and Kinsley. Y'all may be seated. At this time, I'd like to recognize a very special guest. These people play a very important role in the establishment and development of our school. Please hold your applause until each guest has been introduced. Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees, President Dr. Skeeter Hubert, Vice President Mr. Scott Moore, Second Vice President Mrs. Teresa Wagman, Assistant Secretary, Mrs. Stacy Chase. <laughs> CISD Administration, Dr. Curtis Knoll, Superintendent. Dr. Chris Hines, Deputy Superintendent. Dr. Shelley Winkler, Assistant Superintendent for Elementary Schools. Ms. Lisa Garrison, Director of Elementary Schools. Dr. Bethany Methford, Assistant Superintendent for Middle Schools. Mr. Easy Foster, Director of Planning and Construction. Darren Rice, Chief Financial Officer. Okay, my fault. <laughs> all right, thank you all. At this time, we have a special performance by Ms. Butler's third grade class that will be singing a Hope School song.
At this time, I would like to invite uh, Haley Reno she, to the stage. She's going to share a poem with us. The bricks, the roof, the earth below, the solid walls we'll get to know. The space we feel, the scenery, is this all this place can be? The whole community condensed into one familiar place. To what extent are we this place? Or rather, are we hearts and minds with brick and mortar left behind? The bonds we form, the friends we make, the things we need to pack and take. The build-up skills, the lessons learned, the wealth of our respect, hard-earned. We are the school, both you and me, because we are hope and hope is me. Please join me in welcoming our Board of Trustees President, Mr. Skeeter Hubert, to the podium for a few remarks. Thank you, I'll just take a, take a few minutes, uh, but I, I gotta give one correction, and it's out of respect for all of those who actually are doctors. I am not a doctor. <laughs> Any of you who know me know that uh, they don't give doctors to guys named Skeeter, so. That's the way that goes. But I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, it is really a great honor to, uh, to, to welcome you and also acknowledge a couple of people that were part of uh, Reuben Hope Elementary. I um, have them written down so I don't miss anybody, but I, I do want to thank our planning and construction department, IBI Architects, Durotech Construction, and the Signorelli Company. appreciate everything. Uh, and all your, your dedication and efforts to make sure that this school uh, resembles uh, Mr. Hope and also is a warm and welcoming place for everybody who walks through those doors and also a community where kids feel comfortable and confident to learn and teachers feel that they have the, uh, the tools that they need to, to help these kids be successful. And I know that that's a dedication that they all had in making this school possible and and we're grateful for Mr. Lozano and his leadership uh, for all these kids. So anyway, thank you very much. And I'd like to turn the time over to Dr. Noel. Who is it, Dr. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Hubert. My kids will tell you very clearly I'm not a real doctor. So I just, we can, we can uh, follow that. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. What a wonderful night. Uh, how great were those kids? Can we give one more round of applause for the kids tonight? <laughs> you know, if we ought to just change this whole ceremony and just let the kids do the whole thing and just be wonderful. They, they do such a wonderful job. But I, I want to say thank you tonight to our school board uh, for the, the leadership that you all provide and for uh, your guidance in creating this beautiful building for this community, for the kids that are here. I also want to make a special acknowledgement tonight for uh, Mr. John Husbands, who was a board member when we voted to build this school and to name it. Mr. Husbands, are you still here? He's back there. If you'd stand up so we could thank you. And you can see, as Mr. Hubert mentioned, we want to build a place that's warm and welcoming where kids can feel confident. And you can already see that tonight through these young ladies that stood here on the stage and also those that performed. Uh, but that doesn't happen without a wonderful school staff. And uh, I, I did remark to a few of them tonight, I'm not sure this is how they dress every day when they go to school, but man, they look sharp tonight. So with the Hope staff, would y'all stand up so that we can recognize you all tonight? Thank you. <clears throat> we thank you for being here tonight, but more importantly, we thank you for what you do every day. Uh, making a difference in the lives of these kids. So we, we appreciate you so much. Now, one of the hardest jobs that our school board has is naming a school. It's a really difficult thing to do. Um, and the reason it's so difficult is because we live in a wonderful community with great people. So they have so many options, uh, but at some point they have to make a decision about who to name a facility after. Uh, and so we know that we're here tonight to recognize Mr. Hope and his family, uh, but we also have some other school namesakes that have come out tonight to celebrate, and I always like to recognize them at this event. So we have with us tonight Mr. Charlie Patterson, the namesake for Patterson Elementary. We have Mr. Walter Jett as our Jett Teacher Training Center 
namesake. And we also have Miss Carolyn DeMerritt, who is the mother of David Vetter, who our David Elementary is named after. So there's one common bond, I think, when we look across all of the school namesakes that you see, it really stands out, and that's a servant's heart. From Mr. Jett and Mr. Patterson to the work that David did in his young uh, life, it's about giving back to others. You know, that is what stood out uh, when the board was going through the process to name this school. Uh, you heard so much about Mr. Hope, and what jumped off really to me was that even though he was an accomplished lawyer and he was a state representative and he was a school board member, th those are not the words that I heard. Uh, what I heard was a man that was dedicated to the Montgomery County Fair, and a, a man that would do anything to serve the children and serve the community. That meant being at the, the ball field, he'd be at the ball field. Um, I heard from uh, Judy Olson, I know, who lived down the street from, from you all. How he's kind of like the neighborhood dad, always cooking, always you know, inviting everybody to be at the house. Someone that wanted this world to be a better place, and he found ways to do that by serving his community. And so um, for us as educators, we want our schools to be named after people that can be role models not only to the children, but to us as educators. And that's what Mr. Hope is. Right? We all can aspire to make a difference in this community just as he did. And I will tell you all, Hope family, that we are as proud as we could be to have this school named in his honor. And we're proud to be here to celebrate him and you all tonight. So thank you for sharing this moment with us and sharing um, your dad with us, your grandfather with us. And we hope that this building makes you proud and forever will be uh, a place where you know that you can remember him uh, to come here and see this beautiful school. So. Uh, congratulations to you once again, and I want to invite Mr. Lozano to come back as we start the celebration, really, of Mr. Hope this evening. Thank you. The Hope family has shared photographs and mementos from Mr. Hope with our school. The memorabilia um, our showcase in the display case as you come into the building in the entry to help all of us who visit the school know about his life and his accomplishments. Our school namesakes, Reuben W. Hope Jr. Please be sure to stop by before you leave tonight and see the showcase that's there. In addition, we have a prep a prepared a video that will provide a glimpse into the life of our honoree. Well, Reuben loved the outdoors, and uh, he liked he liked horses and he liked cows, and uh, he uh, he had a little ranch up uh, up in the central Texas, and uh, that's where he liked to spend a lot of his free time and uh, hunt and fish and do those things that uh, were outdoors, where he could get away and relax and think and and plan for the future. And one thing about Reuben, his reputation was phenomenal, okay? And I know I'm biased, but really, it was phenomenal. I never met one person who did not think he was a great guy and a great attorney. And you can believe his word. And that's one thing he taught us, is your word is everything. If you give someone your word, whether it's written or not, stick to it. And that's one of the things Reuben did. Uh, he was really involved in the Montgomery County Fair. And he saw the importance of the fair and he saw the importance of what it would do for the youth of our community. I'm not sure how many pigs and hogs and all of those animals that he, uh, he bid on and bought during that, during that whole span that he was involved in it. He uh, came to me uh, at some point in time and said he was thinking about running for the school board. And my first thought was, you've lost your mind. Uh, and he, of course, won, he did a great job. And that's because uh, Reuben was always extremely caring about the community and the youth. To see a person that really did not have to 
get himself into the limelight of being a public servant. He did it in a highly professional way. Uh, he was very dedicated uh, to being a board member and certainly uh, we were very proud of the role that he played back when he served. Lisa Rubin was an extremely strong family person. Nothing was on this earth was more important to him, in my opinion, than his family. And uh, he would give me advice. He talked about his kids and things they were doing, and I would tell him what my boys were doing. And I like to think they were heart-to-heart -heart discussions at the office late at night when we were working. We'd have a break, and we'd talk five or 10 minutes, and he gave me good advice. I think they're gonna remember Reuben as one uh, outstanding person, uh, individual human being that really did follow through with serving others. Uh, I, think, I think they knew his heart. I think he did an extremely good job as both a school board member and a state rep because he was always very conscientious. Reuben was just as honest as the day is long. You couldn't buy him. You couldn't convince him to do something that he did not think was absolutely correct. He was just so sincere about what his responsibilities were as an attorney, as a school board member, as a state representative. Uh, he, he, he practiced that daily. And I think people will always remember who Reuben Hope was. I'm gonna invite Mr. Reuben Hope III to the stage to have speak on behalf of the family. Well, I wasn't expecting that video to go on before me tonight, so uh, good luck with all of this. Uh, I am not a doctor either, and, and, and never played one on TV or any, anywhere else, so we'll get that clear real quick. Like, uh, First thing, uh, I want to welcome everybody here uh, to, to Dad's school, um, it's what we kind of refer to it as. My family appreciates everybody that showed up. I wish my mom could have been here tonight. Uh, she's a little under the weather, but she'll get there. And uh, she's put a lot of her time and effort and everything into the display and everything that's gone on up here. Uh, so we, we really appreciate everybody that, that's come out. Um, I just want to kind of go through some stuff tonight, not the political stuff, not the stuff that got on the courier and, and things like that, and kind of take a little step back to where you saw some of these things back maybe to the roots of it. Um, one thing that our family has got, is, and I've been blessed with the name. So, you know, I introduced myself to several people tonight and I've got to tell them who I really am. So there was uh, an R.W. Hope that is buried in the Bethlehem uh, Cemetery over here in Cut and Shoot. That's my great, great grandfather or my great-grandfather. My grandfather was Reuben Hope, uh, or Reuben Wirt Hope, and uh, his wife referred to him as Wirt. So I really never knew what my grandfather's name was. I thought it was Wirt all these years. And then my dad was referred to as R.W. by so many people. Uh, so I, I really didn't grasp the, com you know, the combination that he was a junior. Uh, I, I happened to be the third uh, and really didn't know my true name until a, a, a teacher in third grade pulled me aside after asking for me to come up there five or six times the first day of school and told me what my real name was. Uh, so it was, it was quite a shock. Uh, Dad called me Trace, Trace Ombres. Uh, a, a really critical time was there was a ZZ Top album that came out in the 60s called Trace Ombres. I didn't know why they named it after me. I was honored, <laughs> but I, it just never dawned on me why they would do that. So it was a, it, it, it was a stretch uh, to, to do this. I, I was smart enough to make a few notes tonight. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bear back on a, on a couple of them. Uh, you know, my, my major thing that I wanna tell you, first of all, is I'm sorry that I'm going to use the word I a lot tonight because y'all got to see the pictures and all that stuff. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is um, tell y'all what I saw. 
maybe a couple glimpses way back there um, and see if I can get through this. So anyway, uh, first thing is when I look back on, on dad, he was always doing stuff for other people. And I kind of look back on the, on the theme of, of, of what he would do, and there's three really big things that, that stood out for me. If you showed interest in something, by God, he was going to figure out a way to get you involved in doing that. Uh, good or bad, he was going to show you how you, you know, get you in there and then let you go. And, and you're going to have to make up your mind if you're going to complete or, or do whatever. And hopefully I can elaborate on a couple of things. He was also ahead of his time in so many things. And it, it's funny looking back and, and watching TV now uh, to see some of these resemblances of things that he had no idea would show up on, on the TV. And the biggest thing is he loved education. And he devoured information. Because I can remember back as a small kid, he would come home every night with files this deep. And he would have to read and read and read and read. And, and I don't remember him ever without a file in him. And, you know, one day he was telling me, oh, you know, the average lawyer does two or three cases a year. And I said, well, Dad, how many are you doing this year? And he said, oh, about eight or ten a, a month, I think, or something like that, Johnny. It was, it was unbelievable. Um, but he just, he devoured it. He, he devoured all the information he could, he could get his hands a hold of. Uh, and he loved, to, he loved to pass it on. Um, the one thing ab about him is that he was told what he was going to do, the story has it. He was going to go to law school, become a lawyer, and that's, that's what his job was. Uh, he never really pushed any of us to do that. If, if we thought we wanted to do something, he said, set you up and let you go with it. And, you know, uh, if you need a little help, he, he would help you. But, but be careful, you know, what you ask for. Uh, as far as showing interest in things. Somewhere down the road, early on, I must have showed interest in, in, in animals. Uh, I've got several pictures of me in a diaper with my first horse, okay? George. I think we both came home in the front seat of the truck together. So that was my first regulation of, of an animal. And then Lonesome the, the Beagle showed up at our house down in, in Houston. Uh, and, and that was good until we went hunting one year early on. And for some reason, there were some doves that showed up in the next week in a cage in the backyard. I think they made it home through the trip. They didn't completely die all the way off. And within a month, we had squirrels. And then I think we had some quail. I know we had ducks. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else we had back there. I think we actually ended up with a, with a raccoon or something like that also. I don't know. But it, early on, you could tell he had an affection for animals. And I think he just used me as an excuse. We had a petting zoo in the backyard. Let's just leave it at that. Um, also, if, if you would get you know, interested in something, uh, it, it, back then at the house in Houston, all the kids would come over all the time. And it was basketball. Well, next month we had a basketball gold out front. And then it was football season, and he went and bought dummies at Barcelona Sporting Goods, of all places. And he had a dummy that was like six foot and weighed 200 pounds, and he'd make us get out there and tackle it. And we would tackle it and tackle it and tackle it, and it's the best thing ever happened at Halloween. We would hang that thing in the tree, and it would swing. And it was so much fun to scare all the kids in the neighborhood over. They'd come and ride that dummy. So, but he, he just got a kick out of it. And, and baseball was the same way. I, I've seen pictures of me with a glove that comes up to my elbow uh, because he was already coaching Little League and everything before I was even big enough to do it. And the same thing with the football and everything, and he became president of the Oaks, Oaks Dad uh, Club there in Houston and actually won uh, several citywide uh, football championships. And uh, he, especially with him graduating from UT, uh, I never kind of got it until he answered me one year why he named his teams the Horn Frogs. It was always purple. They painted their helmets purple and had the frogs on and everything. And he finally said, I got so mad at him they wouldn't give me the horns and give me the, you know, the privilege to do that that I just became a horn toad friend. And he went on about it, you know. But that's, that, was, that was just like that. If he, if he couldn't get around it, he'd make it his own in another way and, and move on. Now, when we moved up to Forest Hills up here, uh, everybody came over. It was just the house that everybody defaulted to. 
And I think that's where I still get a lot of feedback from with some of the kids. I even had one this weekend at my high school reunion that came up to me and thanked me for what my dad did for him. And I was like, I, I don't know the story. <laughs> and he says, you don't need to know the story. And, I, and that was perfectly fine. And there do, there's probably six or seven times a year that it happens to me uh, where he went out of his way, got somebody, I don't want to say off the hook, but represented him, did this punishment because Lord knows if you, if you messed up, you're going to do a punishment. Um, but he, he would help them and get them back on the straight. So that was, that was very important to him. Uh, as, as far as being ahead of his time, I watch some of these shows nowadays, and it's, it's, it's so funny. Have y'all seen that Scared Straight show that they used to put you know, the kids and scare them, all those? Well, I, I think uh, my Uncle Harry and my dad had a meeting one day at HPD. And I think they got busy or something like that. And I was just kind of tagging along in the way like I always was. And I found myself in the tank locked up, as I remember it. Now, maybe that's not what happened, but I remember being locked up for a while. Uh, and then they came back and deputized me uh, for being able to handle being in jail. So that was my, that was my scared straight moment uh, back then. Uh, so it, it was, it's always interesting what you can remember uh, at that point. Another thing is y'all saw the pictures of the big pit and the barbecue. Well, that didn't start off like that. It started off with a little bitty tinky Weber grill and it grew and grew. And I, I did learn that coals do remain hot if they fall out of the grill. Uh, that was a, a lesson I, I, was, I was taught upon myself. Uh, and my dad got a kick out of that. And I, I never will forget that. Uh, but he loved that. So when we moved here, we got graduated to barbecue pits on wheels up in Conroe. And then when we moved out to Montgomery area, we got one that had four wheels on it. It was a trailer and it'd probably hold a thousand or 2000 pounds. Uh, so he just continued to build upon that stuff. So pit masters and man against food, that was, that was part of him. He could have directed those shows, there's no doubt. The last one is he was a really conscious, you know, uh, before, people started planting trees and all that sort of stuff and really doing things. I don't know. I've probably planted over a thousand trees with my dad. That's just what he was there. I'd be fishing or doing something and he'd grab me and we'd have to go plant trees. And everywhere we lived, he'd plant four or five trees and we would move and take seeds from there and we'd plant them in another one and he'd add another one. And finally, I think he'd just settle in on, on pecan trees because he learned how to graft them. So I don't know why, but we probably grafted, what, Greg, 500 pecan trees, I think, at one time. And everybody in the family's been in on that. So when, when he would be way ahead of himself on these things and uh, just absolutely love it. But the biggest thing was is the educational part. You know, he was always wanting to teach. And he, he would do it at the football, at baseball. He would teach the coaches how to coach, how to be a man. He, at Sunday school, he did it. He did it at our house. Uh, one of the biggest things he did is when my scoutmaster fell off the roof and broke his back. Um, he stepped right in. Nobody asked him to. He just did it. So he used to take us on a couple... This is another movie show or whatever, TV show. He would load us up on a Friday, and we would, uh, we lived at 1488 and 45. We would walk all the way down to 249, go across 45, and go out, you know, 12 miles deep in the woods at a lake he knew over there, and we would spend the weekend with no food. Now, there might have been a Three Musketeers or something that made the trip, but he, he thought that there was no food, but that was just him showing us what we could do if we set our minds to it. Uh, so that developed into the Boy Scout troop when he stepped in, and we were, the I think, the only integrated Boy Scout troop in, the, in, in Conroe, or at least the, the ones I ever came in contact with back in the 70s. So it was, it was really nice. Uh, we didn't have a lot. Uh, we went to El Rancho Sima one year where all the Boy Scouts go camping, and I know that dad was gone for a couple hours and he came back and he took us on one of these famous two or three day hikes. And then we got back and then we had to compete in the Olympics there against the camp counselors. And I couldn't figure out why we had to do that. And we, 
of course, what you don't understand is the Boy Scout troop was kind of a feeder to the varsity high school football team, okay? So we had some athletes on there and stuff. The problem was is that we didn't have uniforms that fit us. Somebody had a shirt, somebody had a hat, somebody had a pair of shorts, but nobody had a complete uniform. And the thing was you couldn't eat dinner there with everybody unless you had a uniform on. So when we got back from the woods, Dad had made an agreement. If we competed against their Olympics, against the count counselors, and we won, we got to go to the dinner the rest of the week with everybody. And, uh, yeah, we beat him pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, once he explained that dinner was on the line, it, it was on, big time. So it, it, it just a lot of fun and memories of him doing those type of things. And then when you look forwards at him growing the, the plants in the background and he's got these giant barbecue pits and all the stuff that he ended up doing with the school board and, and uh, you know, he, I've got pictures of him with Buddy Moorhead. How fitting. His school – Feeds into buddies. So, I'm sorry. It's just a, a treat to be here. Um, I, I just wanted to shed some light maybe on some things that don't get talked about. And that's all I wanted to do tonight. Uh, you know, kind of wrap things up. Uh, my dad really never pushed me into doing anything. But if I ever said I wanted to try something or anybody else did, he was there to fill the gap. And that's just what he did. And he filled the gap for a lot of people. Um, and I don't know anybody that has really done that uh, in other places. Uh, I guess there's a saying, you, you can watch somebody when they think nobody's watching them and you can tell their true character. And all these things he would do, nobody's watching him. Not till he got on the school board and all that stuff. It just came natural. It, it, was, a, it was a true gift. And I'm going to shut up now. I've probably gone too long. I could tell a lot more stories, but we're not going to do that in this environment. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> at all. In no way. But I, I wanted to, to let the teachers, and if there was any going to be any parents or anybody here, to know... If your child did a research report in the future on the namesake of the school, you would be proud. You would not be embarrassed at all. In fact, it might lead you forward. So with that, I'm going to get a grip and go over here and sit down. Uh, again, uh, if you get a chance in the next week or two, uh, drop a, a note to my mom. I know she was highly upset that she couldn't be here, and she's worked really, really diligently over the years for doing this. And I want to let the, again, school board and the faculty here and everybody else, thank y'all for doing this. Uh, we will continue to back your school uh, as best we possibly can going forwards. And I can't wait to get me a, a Husky t-shirt, that's for sure. So thank y'all. I know, I'm gonna, yeah. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Huber <laughs> and Dr. Noll to unveil uh, the portrait um, of Mr. Hope.
I want to thank everyone for attending this very special evening. Many people made valuable contributions for this night. Thanks to all of you. Thank you for helping us celebrate this incredible um, gentleman, this individual in our new world-class school. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful building. So enjoy the remaining of the evening. And once again, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Y'all have a wonderful evening.